And now for the Monero development segment. There you go. We made a new one. <laughs> it looks uh, great. <laughs> great job. Great job. <laughs> Digo, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing? So we got Digo, who's going to cover cover the topic of M ordinals, kind of give us a quick overview, mm -hmm. and then we have a bunch of other, a few other uh, heavy hitters that are going to jump up uh, and give their insights. We have Justin. We have um, off. Offrin XMR. I don't know. I don't know how to how to pronounce his his handle there. And then we have MB, MB who's jumping on. Um, so, yeah, if you want to quickly kind of run us through mm -hmm. the review, and then I'd love to have these other guys jump up and give their different takes, and we can get a good handle on the situation. Oh yeah. So like um like Doug said, this plans. I plan for this to be a quick speed run of like the technicals. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's not going to be. I try to be un, unbiased as possible to give you the technicals on how a um, Monero NFTs or Monero Ordinals work. So that's my goal here. And if, I, I expect the people after me to give their you know opinions on what should happen about it. But basically, we're, we're here talking about Monero NFTs again, but someone's actually built them. And before we get started, shout out to Body. I he has been having. Some great conversations on Twitter. I don't give a shout out to them. They definitely inspired some of the talking points in this. So I'm gonna give them due credit. But let's get into it. Um, so Moon Narrow built NFTs on Monero. Um, they're not be confused with the core dev that has like a similar sounding name. This is a completely new person. No one, at least no one publicly knows who they are. And basically, how these um NFTs or more knows where you want to call them work. They basically put um, information in TX Extra, and it's, it's surprisingly cheap. I remember looking at this transaction was like less than like a dollar in like Monero fees, actually. So basically, all they do, they literally just put an image, a GIF, and the TX Extra, which we covered in like a month ago when we talked about this. And they also have a beautiful design that allows you to send them, which is I've never seen something, something like this before. It's really cool. So you can actually send these NFTs. They have all this information on their website also. And this protocol is very new. I think the GitHub, the first commit was like, I think like three weeks ago. So very new. So it might change. It might grow or, or it might not grow. It might get shut down. I don't know. I'm just giving you the facts as they lay. Um, and technically speaking, you can't stop NFTs on a technical level. Basically, if long, as long as you can store data on Monero, you can store data in many different ways. And there's basically no way to stop it on a technical level from happening. So that's just a technical fact. You cannot prevent someone from putting arbitrary data on a blockchain. That's just the facts as they are. Um, but what we can do, we can make the data storage expensive, right? So you, you can't stop them from storing data, but you can make it super expensive to store data on the blockchain. That's one approach to sort of prevent these things, if you believe. It should be prevented. Try and stay unbiased here. <laughs> um, there are a ton of proposed solutions. Some include removing TX Extra completely. Some include mandating a encryption on it by default, making it a certain length. It's just there are a lot of conversations happening, and this specific solution set is often discussed. I think every week on the TX Extra debate or discussion, not debate, that goes on the Monero core devs. And stopping any time is a little confused. I'm trying to do a speed run, so I might leave some things out. Yeah, no, no, keep keep going because there's there's right. a lot to cover here, and then we'll we'll get we'll get MB up here and offering XMR, uh, and we're trying to get Justin up. He was in here, but he he disappeared. He put out a, a really good thread, kind of oh yeah, covering it all. So we'll try to get him up as well to to talk about it. But go ahead. Um, like I said, speaking of that thread, um, currently there. These um, NFTs and more nodes are not a threat to the privacy of Monero because um, the people say that they are in the future. They might be a, a larger threat because they become more popular. And but right now they're so small. There's it's like it's just not a big threat. I think like there was like 300 made. I think maybe like 100 somewhere in a magnitude of like no more than 500 made. So right now they they make up such a small portion of the Monero transactions. So I think last time I checked it was like maybe 3,000 or maybe 34,000 Monero transactions a day. So currently not a big issue. Might be a threat in the future, though. And if you want any more info about this technical happenings, 
you can um, tune into the Monero Research Lab meeting. I think it happens every week. So you can literally see people like Arctic Mine, Rucknum. I think Justin's in there talking about this issue. So you want more information that's there. And like Doug said, let's get on to the guests. I think we might have Justin and of XMR. But yeah, I'm going to pass it back to you, Doug. Awesome. Thank you. Great overview. I mean, we should say, Digun, I you did a presentation on NFTs on Monero. What was it? Two months ago? It was, yeah. it, was it was some time ago. We had it. You know, we <laughs> talked about the theoretically the ability for it to be done, and uh, I think we, we got some pushback at the time when you presented it. And yeah. here we are. Uh, it's no longer theoretical. Somebody has attempted to do it. My my first question to you, and I guess mm-hmm. let's let's get the other guys up here. Those that are up. Um, they're calling it, you know, M ordinals. My understand ordinal, you know, there, there's ordinals and inscri- as the, the 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 lingo used in Bitcoin land, right? There's ordinals mm-hmm. and then there's inscriptions. The inscriptions are are what we're calling these NFTs, right? Saving uh, data on the chain in mm-hmm. a unique way, and you know, associating a satoshi with with that data that's being saved, and then when you essentially you send it, you're you're sending ownership of that of that piece of data. Uh, but then inscriptions, inscriptions are basically a a serial number system that's being essentially laid on top of Bitcoin, right? Where every Satoshi has its own unique serial number. Mm-hmm. Are M ordinals essentially, does it have its own serial number system for, you know, for for Monero or or is that is that something different? Why why are they being pointing? Because that's my understanding of what ordinals are. Do you, are, uh, do you have insight into that? And maybe maybe the other guys that are that are about maybe to- the other people people oh. are the experts. But I, I do know that technically Satoshi's don't have serial numbers technically. Well, no, the, Satoshi, the, yeah. the ordinal system they you know uh, the Satoshi's themselves don't, mm-hmm. but yeah. The ordinal system basically overlays these serial numbers on top of it, right? It's a separately yeah. running software that uh, overlays serial numbers essentially on top of each Satoshi from the from the the genesis block on onward. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we're calling M ordinals in Monero land, I assume, is not doing the same thing. But maybe maybe it, others can chime in on that. It does it, but you have to opt into it essentially. Okay. Yeah. Let's um yeah, let's let's get D Goon up here. D Goon he's already I mean <laughs> let's get, let's get, let's let's get you get back M- on again. Let's okay. Get MB right. up here and offer an XMR. All right, let's see. The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. Hello, what's hello. Up, MB, what's hello. up? Is my audio good? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for patiently waiting. The champ is here. <laughs> the champ is here. <laughs> what's up, man? How's Thank you guys for, for doing this. Uh, this is obviously a hot topic. Uh, I asked you guys because I saw you were, you, were, you were pretty involved. MB, I know you were actually, I think, playing around with this, making making some of these uh, NFTs on Monero. Offer, I don't know, were you, were you messing around with it as well? I played the fifth. <laughs> 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 so what what can you guys tell us about it i mean my, my my question there is it so is this analogous to the ordinals system we saw in bitcoin or is this something different i'd argue it's worse because it can be used right now currently to expand the blockchain because we have dynamic blocks okay yeah within the span of 100 blocks you we could be sitting at 30 mb blocks or bigger yep Okay, and but just for, for my to back up for my understanding with ordinals, basically uh, allocating a serial number for each individual Satoshi, is that is there something similar going on here with Monero, or it's just that that's not the case? So in so, Monero, every transaction has what's called TX Extra, and TX Extra is basically well, I've been referring to it as TX Trunk Chore. It's just a place where we put stuff that doesn't have dedicated fields, and that basically anybody can put whatever they want in it. So we've used it for soft forks before. Currently, there's uh, public keys in there and sub addresses. And really, all these things should have their own dedicated fields. In Seraphis, they do. But right now, we have TX Extra, which everything is just stuffed into. And that's where you put the NFT. So it's not on each Pico Nero. 
but on each transaction. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 not it's not as Body's chiming in here. They use a f- uh, first in first out. That's serial number. Uh, these aren't ordinals. Body's saying these aren't ordinals per se. It's just cheeky to call them M ordinals. So they're they're really not uh, analogous to Bitcoin ordinals. But what we I are th- seeing here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I think you inscribe them like onto a Monero output. Like you make. I'm pretty sure you use one that is 0.00001 XMR, and yep. it is basically what you assign it to. And this is the TX extra field. Um, and this is where the data goes for the. We, we like, like, I'm trying, um, I like to call them mobs because it's funnier. And um, this whole thing, Mordinals, um, probably like an. It's often, uh, how would you say it? It's like a, a joke or something. It's I, I yeah, don't think the it, guy it, behind it, is extra whoever serious. whoever is doing this stuff. Like, we'll upload memes and stuff, and then they upload all this junk, and this is just nonsense. This is just spamming. Whatever this nonsense is, is just spamming the network. <laughs> and you know, I, I'm not I'm not okay with uploading memes either. But you know, if we're going to have fun, we're going to do it the right way. <laughs> yeah, give it a cool name that's actually memeable like the yeah, upload, upload 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 like you know Monerotopia conference to, uh advertisements and stuff pictures to just yeah let's see that i want to see the Monerotopia one can you pull it up um so i think the explorer is currently slightly broken you gotta be <laughs> <Yeah>. a little... <laughs> no but that's another thing you gotta be a little bit careful because people yeah. are uploading not safe for work stuff on there yeah so what I do have, this is the transaction. Um, I minted something, uh, when was it, yesterday? Um, it cost me... I was able to share oh. it. There you go. Oh, yeah. So somebody somebody uploaded this. What well, wasn't us, we swear. Um, <laughs> and, you know, for the sake of not propelling this further, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking to purchase this Monero NFT. Although it is intriguing. See, that's the problem. This is this is very intriguing, right? Um, it, this this plays. I NFTs are. I, I'm 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 interested in obviously the digital cash aspects of crypto. That that is by far what interests me, interests me the most. Uh, I do see potential use cases for NFTs. I've I've always said that. I've always think they've they've been they're an interesting concept and they're here to stay and they're going to be used in very interesting ways. I just think what uh what the market hasn't uh you know um uh, figured out is what you know where nfts are ultimately going to reside right so it's really about them being built on a chain that's going to be here to stay which is why i thought ordinals were actually or or inscriptions on bitcoin were actually interesting for me that kind of made nfts interesting to me for the first time because here they are natively built on bitcoin and we know bitcoin is here to stay so a, a native Bitcoin NFT does seem like a very interesting and, and valuable thing, uh, and 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 a Monero NFT in theory uh, would would see I I would personally be okay with it, but not if in any way it begins to eat into Monero's fungibility and privacy and use as digital cash. And my understanding is certainly in this current implementation. That it is going to have that negative effect. Is that correct? Yeah, even if in any implementation, really, because where it was said earlier that if you like it doesn't hurt privacy, that's not true. Because when you when you build a transaction, you build decoys, and your decoys are other transactions. If those other transactions are known to be NFTs, and let's say let's say worst case scenario, you have fifteen ring members that are all NFTs. It's obvious which one's the true spend. It's the one that isn't an NFT. Mm-hmm. So They're right. So as NFTs and, are, are are produced more and used more, as Justin's saying, if we go over whatever, if ten percent of uh, of all transactions are these M ordinals, then we're starting to run into an issue. Yeah, Ten-ten. and it's not really a hypothetical because if you look at Bitcoin, Bit, the Bitcoin blockchain has exploded. Like there's 150 plus blocks waiting every day, nonstop, because it's mostly ordinals. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'd probably say less than five percent of the less, less than five percent of the volume, less than five percent of the space 
on the blockchain that's being used for Bitcoin is for actual transactions. Now, how about to Digun's point that is, you know, people will will find a way, right? So even if TX Extra is deprecated, there'll be some other way of doing it and perhaps in a way that's even more damaging to... Well, they'd have to have a lot of money to do that. Because like if you do the math on it, like right now, you can store a, a 4K video on the blockchain. Well, first you have to start off a little smaller to inflate the blocks, but you can get away with doing it for probably less than 2,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. If you get rid of TX Extra, it costs probably millions to 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 to, to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that's so. Is that the way is, you think that's the direction we ultimately head in? That we uh, eliminate deprecate TX Extra, or I've heard other discussions being that you know we make TX Extra. Um, I guess uh, a cap, cap the size of it and encrypt it so they they all well, all T exceptions are analogous. The are, thing about capping the size of it is is like Digun said, I'll find a way around that. And it's easy to do that. All you have to do is add a little identifier to each one of them and tie them together, and then have the software string them back together into an image. Like you can use five transactions instead of one. It's just gonna it's an instant. I have no problem with with lowering it right now though because it's still an increased cost. Right. So right as it is, like basically unlimited, it's it's not it's not good. So limiting it is is a good idea. But yeah, so what, but yeah, what would what would be your most like, idea? No, that, that's what I'm saying. So my is down the road when it comes to Seraphis or full membership proofs, these things might not be a problem for fungibility. There might be ways to split them from rings entirely in the full membership proof so that they're not mixed into regular transactions. So they're not lowering your 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 anonymity set. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's solutions that can be had to support them, not not necessarily to support them, but to a, a, allow them without damaging the primary use case of the blockchain and without hurting. Like, th that's the biggest thing is node runners. So if if I'm running a node that that's, that's going to eat up all my storage space and nobody wants to pay for storage space, you're not getting paid to run a node. Nobody wants to run nodes to store your NFTs. Or, or like I'm saying, to store your 4K videos after somebody decides to start uploading 60 frames per second just by sending 60 transactions per second. So solution, but the, but these solutions are, are are down the road, right? Seraphis potentially uh, solves this problem, right? Yeah. So that, that's so my, my immediate my immediate like what what I feel we should be doing is limiting it immediately, and then at the next hard fork, removing it. And then the hard fork after that should be Seraphis. And by then we should be able to add it back and figure out what, like, the better ways to do it. Hopefully we got the full membership proof figured out by then. We got the rings, like the segregation of the rings figured out in a way that doesn't hurt privacy or create separate pools of, of, of transactions. So, so limit it, then remove it. And then uh, bring in Seraphis, and it could it could then reblossom yeah. with that with that that new tech in a way that's not damaging to Bitcoin, uh, Monero's fungibility. Yeah, and then another big thing is if like transaction volume, regular regular real transaction volume was to explode, then it wouldn't be this bad either. But because transaction volume is so low, mm -hmm. it's real easy to. You know what I mean? Like the amount of NFTs going out on Bitcoin is is multitudes higher than the amount of transactions we do today. Right. Yeah. If this if this were to take off, it would be yeah, it'd be a problem damaging overnight. Yeah. And, and, and like I'm saying, for particularly for node runners, which means that it's that's that's who's hurting it's hurting the blockchain itself. Because if if say I have 500 gigabytes, um, like storage dedicated to my partition for my node, and it's only 150 right now. But by the end of the month, it's 500. My node's going to go down. Mm -hmm. MB, do you have a, a similar take on this? Yeah, I agree that it shouldn't be there the way it is right now, at least. Um, definitely should be limited. I know that some legitimate use cases exist for it, but I think they could find other ways around it to still keep existing. I'm, I think um, sub addresses currently use TX extra. And yeah, anything else? Uh, 
TX pub keys. But that's another thing is even with sub addresses in TX Extra, if you send a if you send a transaction to more than three outputs, TX Extra will fingerprint whether or not one of those outputs was a sub address or not. I mean, so it's, it's TX like sub addresses are only in TX Extra because they were added in a soft fork. And they've never been moved. They've never been made. They're not by, by consensus. What are the other potential damaging effects, though, of moving TX Extra? I mean, we have, I know, like the Sarai project that's being developed, I believe, is relying on the fact that TX Extra exists, right? It's it's how it's going to function. Um, I have nothing against Sarai or Kaya, but Sarai itself, it... it it plans on posting view keys to the blockchain. So even if the TX extra from Sarai looks like every, every other one, and even if they didn't use TX extra, posting the view keys is kind of damaging itself. So I'm not in the party of we need that. And it's just, you know, I'm biased. I don't, I don't, I don't really care for exchanges or swaps or I'm a Monero guy. And as far as adding an exchange so that I can swap into whatever coin and damage Monero at the same time is not like in my ideals. Do you see any then means for Monero integrating with decentralized exchanges? Is there other are there other architectures that can be like, put in place? Yeah, like BISC and BISC Havano, they don't they don't use TX extra. They don't post view keys. Mm -hmm. So I don't you know local Monero works just fine. Okay. I'm not sure if basic swap decks uses view keys. Um, takes extra, not sure, for their atomic swaps. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. No, well, um, I remember, I remember somebody asked if atomic swaps use TX, and they no, they they weren't. At least the commit protocol wasn't. Okay. Yeah, we'll have we'll have uh, Kaiban. He'll he'll be at Monerotopia, so I'm sure this will be a topic of conversation. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about this there. Yeah. But and one of my big things with Kai and Sarai is like this, this route works like, because it's implementable. Like, it's like, you know, there's a Bitcoin developer that came out and said, stop, you're cheating and lying to the code. Like you're not cheating and lying to the code. If it's a feature that's there and available for you to use, it's there. You know, so he, he designed his, his, his exchange around features that were there and available to use. Right. Mm hmm so but if they're not there or say we do need a full membership proof or whatever then there has to be real solutions right you can't just stuff everything in the junk drawer what does this mean over overall though for the ecosystem where people are you know relying on the protocol to to, to build things and then you know the the protocol changes in a way where their solutions are are deprecated along with the the changes well, I made that argument maybe a week ago that we should do something before we start rug pulling people. Because if we start letting people build build like corporations or companies or like entrepreneurs that dedicated time and research into this stuff, and then we're just gonna come and be like, "Hey, you can't do that," and then then hard fork on like, like we got to do it right, mm -hmm. right? So if it's gonna be supported, we have to support it properly, not just in a way that's like, "Hey, I, you know, it might hurt a little bit, but just." You know, we don't know how bad it could be. It's not going to be. It's like when Zcash was saying, oh, uh, the volume's not that bad, so we don't have to worry about spam. And then they get hit with spam and they're like, uh oh, you know, like we're not supposed to be reactive. We're supposed to get it done right first. Right. And that's what I'm saying. I don't like the fact that sub addresses are still in, in TX Extra and that integrated addresses are depreciated, but there's still people out there using them and those hurt privacy, too. You know, like these things, are, these are things that we've hard forked a few times since they were implemented and they haven't been properly put where they're supposed to be. And I understand a lot of the work has been focused on Seraphis and everything else. Like, like I said, in Seraphis, the stuff is where it's supposed to be. But, you know, we still need to focus on the core protocol because it's not going to be too great if somebody decides to start uploading movies to the blockchain. Unless the good thing about uploading movies to the blockchain <laughs> is for miners. When those blocks are getting that big and those people are paying all those fees, it, you know, it could become profitable. But that's a number to go up game, and I don't care about that. Same here, same here. Monerotopia is going to be even more interesting than <laughs> than I had hoped. I mean, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of a lot of convo going on there. We're gonna have, we're gonna have Co there. I, I would love to hear kind of Co's take on these things. I'm sure. What what is Co saying in in the in the dev 
dev chats do you know Co is for limiting it but Co at the same time he's focused on seraphis and he's i'm speaking i'm not trying to put words in his mouth but i'm pretty sure he's sick and tired of going back and forth over the conversation because it's been two years mm -hmm. you know it's been an argument going back and forth for over two years now and does does Co want to take the same approach as you and limit it and then completely deprecate it no he just he he's he he wants us to come to consensus mm -hmm. so his his highest vote is to is to limit it and okay i don't know how about uh monero monero moo what what is what is he saying Mu originally said remove it and uh remove it or same same thing like everybody was voting for two different options so they're either voting remove and or limit it or limit it and or remove so Mu was in those same groups Mu was Mu was either remove it or limit it and with optional encryption and length and whatever but i'm like that limited option is just people making compromises i'm not you know that's that's honestly how I feel. It's just people making compromises and they're, they don't want to, you know, anger anybody. They don't want to. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you know, you're supposed to do what's best for the project. When I say what's best, I mean, it could be nice to have blocks go up to 10 megabytes right now and start collecting a lot of money for miners. It might even help with the price action. But is that what we really want to turn Monero into, you know? Are you, are there, oh, go ahead, go ahead, body. I think the last thing that I saw from Moo on the, uh, on the MRL chat was he was in favor of um, limiting and uh, potentially encrypting, but I don't think he was in the remove camp. No, he, he was in the remove camp. He voted A, B, three. And then after arguing, he got mad at us and said that he wants to vote B3 just because he's mad at us. But hey, you made me say it. So just for just for clarity. So the thing is, everyone agrees that something needs to be done uh, yeah. at this point. So in order to yeah. make the decision uh, to facilitate us coming to consensus, um, they limited to one of two options, either option A, which is totally remove it entirely, or option B, which is limit it to like 256 kilobytes or 512 kilobytes. I'm oh, sorry, not kilobytes. Why do I keep saying that? Bytes, uh, 256 bytes or 512 bytes, um, and then potentially encrypt it. There's really an open question about we don't we practically cannot enforce encryption at the consensus level at the protocol level. Um, we're basically going to have to rely on relays to perform some kind of statistical test um, because you should have um, basically a uniform distribution of the bits. Um, but there is a question about how reliable those tests are because you're not. Usually you would perform that over um, kilobytes or megabytes of data and say if it was random or not, but we're only talking about um, 256 or 512 bytes here. So um, the last I saw from Mu is that he was in the camp of um, keeping it, but limiting at 256 or 512 bytes. And then um, there's still some open question about how and if we can enforce encryption on it. Um, that will maybe, it's hard to say, but that might make it into... Um, into the code in terms of the way that the relays act. So in other words, um, it, you're not like, you wouldn't reject a, a transaction, or sorry, you wouldn't reject a transaction extra that doesn't have encryption because you can't, there's no way to like cryptographically say for sure that yes, it was encrypted with the proper key, at least not without changing the signature scheme and having to incorporate some like cha-cha algorithm or some crazy stuff that's just like completely impractical. So what's happening right now is that it's being limited to one kilobyte uh, or a thousand bytes, but the relays are enforcing that. So relays are saying, hey, I'm not going to relay your transaction. I'm not going to broadcast a transaction um, that, uh, that's over this limit. But hypothetically, no one that's not part of consensus you could run an old node that still relays those transactions for transaction extra that might be you know like like a megabyte if you wanted to so anyways that's um hopefully a little bit more clarity there on on uh, what's going on with that those two options the the people behind this didn't they wasn't their proposed solution that it, the the tr transactions that when transactions are made it should just ignore um you know the inputs that are are using the m ordinals 
Yeah, but that creates segregated uh, transaction pools on the blockchain and still doesn't do anything about the bloat. And so that, that's definitely an, a no starter, a non-starter. For for me, that, that's for, for me, it's like, you know, if you have one plus one equals two, everybody's like, but we could make it 2.1 or 1.9. And I'm like, why don't you just do what just what what do you I don't know. No, it's not. It's a non-starter for anything, anything. But but like I like uh, sec one had said uh, limited to one kilobyte, not said, but there's a pull request that's been open for a month from Tevador to limit it to one kilobyte. And like, that's the one we're trying to push forward for with, with right now. Like, because it's already open, it's written, it's, it's partially reviewed, you know, it's, it's, but as far as like, I'm saying it's, it's an attack vector and anybody that wants to say it isn't, you know, they just don't know what, they don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Any, go ahead, buddy. Sorry, I'm, uh, uh, so I just wanted to um, offer a couple maybe opinions or, uh, again, a little bit more clarity on on the sizes of these transactions we're talking about. And I don't think it's entirely comparable to Bitcoin, although um, it, of XMR does make a good point that um, it, it could like this thing could end up looking a lot like an attack vector if it becomes popular. Like if Monero becomes widely adopted and we see adoption increase by, say, 10x and people really like these uh these ordinals or, or whatever, any kind of arbitrary data storage. It doesn't have to just be ordinals. Um, but the thing is, Bitcoin right now is looking at four megabytes of available space in the witness data. So people have uploaded almost entirely like four megabyte JPEGs um, or even video sometimes. Um, but, you know, right now, what we're talking about is limiting to 256 bytes or, uh, you know, or 512 bytes. So like the ability to upload 4K streaming is really that's going to be so difficult. And the other thing I would say is that all of all of the arguments against a flood, um, like a flood attack on the network, basically double in my mind. They double here for this question of, well, do you want to bloat the blockchain? You know, it's an attack vector where someone can make, you know, just massively expand the blockchain. And it's like, well, that's going to be very difficult to do if transaction extra is limited to 256 or 512 bytes because that's really not very much data. You can see the ordinals that we're seeing on Monero right now are pretty crude, right? They're very rudimentary. They're, they're not like they're not like the stuff we see on Bitcoin. Now imagine cutting that in half or cutting that by a factor of four. Those are not going to be very good NFTs. They're, they're not going to make for very good images. So, and then if you have to string transactions together to make larger, you know, to upload 4K streaming video, um, that's that's going to run into so much cost for anyone that wants to do that. That that's to me like the arguments against a flood attack uh, double for the question of can ordinals really bloat the blockchain here? That's that's what I said though. Is that it? It increases the cost, but it doesn't stop the the attack. You know, it increases it from basically free to you need a little bit of money. But how how is that different from like any other flood attack that we've talked about in um, just general attack vectors and trying to poison outputs? Oh, friend, you get a response. To that. <laughs> I, I would say it's not only that one of them can happen completely unintentionally just simply by people using nfts yeah you do make a good point there that okay so a single dedicated attacker is going to have a very hard time doing a flood attack but if hypothetically um ordinals or nfts are like widely available to the masses it might look like a flood attack from a non-malicious like they're not trying to be malicious but Exactly. Perhaps the masses love their NFTs, and so they can all pool their resources and sort of accidentally attack the network. That that could be possible, I guess. Yeah. What do, What do you guys see as being so? What, what immediate move you think will be made in terms of reaction to this? Well, the first thing that that like uh, so pull request eighty seven thirty three is open, and that's the one that was written by Tevador, and that's what's looking like we're going to merge ASAP to release in the next point release, mm -hmm. and that should limit it to one kilobyte, which okay. should increase the cost. Which I'm saying right now is it's 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 too low. It's why is it? it's too low. It's dangerous though. Like mm -hmm. it's that's it's not cool though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can put one hundred kilobytes on the chain for like twenty cents. Yeah. And 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 you can do it at an insane rate. 
Yeah, I, I have already made too many. I need to stop. And, and, and as far as what's on the blockchain, we have GIFs on the blockchain on Monero. Yes, I made them. I made the first one. <laughs> And and B, what, uh, so you, you're using this, you're interacting with it. Are you? But but you're ultimately opposed to its its usage. Yeah, this this shouldn't exist, not at all. Uh, I've been using it because it's kind of funny. I got to play around with uh, command line. I haven't used the command line wallet before. I had to use it for this. Uh, learn something new. Uh, but I don't think I'm gonna mint anything more than what I did like yesterday. <laughs> Do you do you guys think this was potentially started by somebody in the Monero community that wanted to prove a point that you know we we a change needs to be made before it's it's abused? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So uh, it was like maybe six months ago we had somebody come in MRL. Their name was TX Extra, and they said remove <laughs> TX Extra. And we said, oh well, we've been talking about it, blah blah. And they said, okay, fine, go check the blockchain and the MRL logs were on the blockchain. They were uploading all of the logs from MRL to the blockchain hmm. and they were like can you stop doing that and he's like okay i'll stop and he turned it off and he's like now we're moved tx extra and other people we'll talk about it and now here we are hmm. okay it's like if you don't like if you you know and that's the thing is it's not just about being able to post like right now you can post pl public information whatever you want on 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 tx extra and if a malicious actor is doing that and poisoning outputs if they don't have tx extra it's only obvious to them, but if with TX Extra, anybody looking at the blockchain can see can see the messages they're writing. And someone posted like a collection before even the the mobs happened. They went over the TX Extra that already exists on the chain, and there were like like hundreds of emails. There was credit card information. There were. We, we, we use payment IDs back in the day when we threw a Monero party as a way for people to send their email address. This was in like 20, 19, 20, 18, no, I think it was like 2018. 18, 18, yeah. 18. You know, uh, not, not knowing what we were doing and how we were, you know, misusing things. Yeah, um, that, that's, that, that's one of the biggest problems with it is it's like, it's sitting there and it's just hanging out right now and it, it's, it, like Monero Bull said, it shouldn't exist in the form okay. that it's in. And I'm I'm not saying you should get rid of TX Extra 100%, burn it with fire, and then let people just bloat the blockchain some other way. I'm saying there's got to be a real solution here, and mm -hmm. a real solution that doesn't involve saying, okay, you can put NFTs as long as they're smaller than this size. And if you want to make them bigger, then you got to... We're just giving you an easier way to, to do the stag. Mm-hmm. But you're you know, saying if you, you want yeah, if you want to stag, then you got to go, you got to do it the hard way. And if you want to use the field that we made for exchanges, then you got to be an exchange. <laughs> That's going to be kind of hard to enforce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you know what, you know what I mean? Like we have like, uh, like, like say we have a field for the TX pub key. The only thing that'll be in there is the TX pub key, not just random junk. Well, so right hypothetically, now, TX Extra, you can put anything you want in it. So hypothetically, if we remove TX Extra entirely with Seraphis, I, I think right now the consensus, for the most part, is to um, to use relays to limit to one kilobyte um, to get that pull request merged. Um, so the conversation that's happening now is about what do we do with with Seraphis when right? Because we want to fix the thing hopefully forever um, by the time Seraphis comes out. So then um, that's where the sort of A and B option comes into play. One thing that, um, so I've kind of trying to been doing some numbers and talking to some of the devs to understand what the risk of steganography is. So if we remove TX extra completely, um, right now there's 16 outputs is the maximum number of outputs you can have on a single transaction. Um, each of those are 32 bytes, each output, um, but only about 20 of those bytes are useful for encoding data. So that leaves about 320 bytes of data that you could use um, outputs for arbitrary storage of information. So um, 320 is you know, pretty close to that 256, uh, 512 bytes number. Uh, it still does enable arbitrary data storage. And the problem is there's, not, it, there's almost no way to stop, there, there's basically no way for any blockchain to stop people from storing arbitrary data in different parts of the transaction. And the output data is not the only place that you could store 
um, that you could store data as well. So, I mean, the argument for getting rid of transaction extra is like, okay, yes, it's a problem, steganography, people in st uh, storing arbitrary data on a chain that's supposed to just be digital cash. Um, you know, that, that's kind of a problem that everyone has. And, but the argument is that we should limit that as much as possible. And okay, so maybe people will still use steganography for arbitrary data storage. It's less efficient. It's, um, you're gonna end up having to pay more costs, um, but it does still look like that's possible there. So. Yeah. The one, the only idea that I've personally been able to come up with, and you know, I'm not a dev, and I kind of pitched this to a few guys, and it seemed like they, there was some pushback, but it wasn't like um, tossed out, you know, completely tossed out of the window. Hypothetically, maybe relays could implement some kind of statistical check on the output set. So, like, let's suppose you have um, four or more outputs. So you might say, okay, well, this is a high risk transaction to be potentially storing arbitrary data. So let's apply some kind of statistical check to see if this meets some minimal randomness threshold. Now, it won't stop people from storing arbitrary data. They could just encrypt it. But at least if it's encrypted, then you've kind of solved 99% of the problem, which is having the effect of poisoning the outputs. Um, there's also kind of a counter argument to be made that if we go to 32, 64, 128 ring members with Seraphis, Suddenly, this might become less of a problem. You know, you might have some poison outputs sitting here or there, but, you know, you've got so many more ring members that it's it's really not nearly as big of a problem. Whether that's actually possible with those statistical checks, again, is, is difficult to say because you're working with so few bits that, um, you know, you could end up getting a lot of false positives or false negatives. Um, but anyways, it's, it's one idea that maybe could help alleviate the problem. Ideally, we would go to full membership proofs and that would really basically fix the problem or, or at least the poison output problem. That's yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. Is a full membership proof is looking to be the answer. Well, the the answer to allowing it without because you can because with the full membership proof you can do all all sorts of different things that lower the the size or the cost of sending those transactions. So an NFT might not have to use as much uh, size on the blockchain. I mean, like as far as selecting transactions as its own decoys and stuff. That could still be a ways away, though, right? The um, full membership proof could take us many years to actually get that implemented. No. Well, the, the one of the things that pushes innovation is a need for it. So when you just compromise all the time, you never do it. How far out do you think we realistically are? Two plus n years. Two plus n meaning like if we remove TX extra, I'd say maybe a year. If we okay. don't remove it, whenever it becomes a problem again. What are the main trade-offs of, um, of implementing full membership proofs like a ZK snark? Uh, ZK snark has a, has a lot of trade-offs, has a lot of trade-offs right now, but uh, we can, uh, Tevador has been looking at different, different encryption curves and stuff like that, that we can do for a basic full membership proof. So like, it's not like we're stuck in the mud and like I'm saying, Tevador is the one that opened the, 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 the issue to remove it he's the one that wrote the pull request to limit it and he's also the one that's investigating full membership proofs so like you know he, he wrote it he wrote random x he you know mm -hmm. he's, he's a he's a smart guy and he, he's he, he i'm not just saying i trust his opinion but it feels like to me like he's in the camp of let's do it right like let's let's do the full membership proof. Let's figure it out, and let's you know we got to remove TX extra because you know right now it's not it's not good. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. There's a part of me that kind of enjoys the fact that there's some small amount of extensibility. I I mean I know a lot of projects have basically been able to get away without using TX extra for the most part, and the ones that are using it can probably figure out ways around that. Um, like, for example, with Seraphis, you can actually do refund transactions without ever getting sent a refund address, which is really cool, uh, which was part of the ThorChain problem. I, I remember, um, oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but um, Kaya, Kaya Burr something or other. Anyways, he was saying that um, if he could do refund transactions, uh, he wouldn't need transaction extra. He could just um, use the, I, I don't know, whatever crypto magic Seraphis uses to make that happen, but you can send a transaction and the recipient can just send it right back to you and you never even have to send them a return address. But anyways, I do like the idea of um, extensibility, although I think, I don't know, I'm probably kind of wrong for that. <laughs> no, but like, think about what you just said, right? Like, so say if a solution was to add a, add a proper field for a refund address, then why don't we do that? 
instead of supporting NFTs for now. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm saying. Like once once we get to maybe a hundred K transactions a day, two hundred K transactions a day, oh. then problems aren't this big. No, I mean that's a good point. Like it's it's not ideal. Um and uh Alex was making good points as well about um kind of how Bitcoin has this crazy ecosystem full of soft forks and non -ba or complete backwards compatibility and everyone's on some different standard and there's hundreds of BIPs out there. So like development on the Bitcoin ecosystem is really difficult. And he was saying that Transaction Extra opens the door to that same problem. Um, he makes a good point. I'm not sure that I would that I would take it as far as that because Bitcoin has all of these extra problems, you know, all of these BIPs and, and they've soft worked so many times and, and all this stuff. Whereas like Transaction Extra is kind of like an arbitrary field um, that you could hypothetically build out other functionality there. I, I don't know. I just like the idea that it facilitates functionality, um, even if it's some small amount. I guess personally, I'm not worried about NFTs. Um, these are like at one kilobyte, these are very crude NFTs. And if you cut that down to 250, uh, 256 bytes, like, are you really going to be able to put anything there that's going to catch on? People are just going to use other chains that they can upload 4K streaming video as opposed to, um, you know, like Windows 95 looking images. Right, but that's the problem. So people keep saying that, you know, you're going to push good actors that would normally use TX Extra to stag and this, that, whatever. Where the fact is that anybody that wants to bloat the Blake blockchain is going to do the easiest method. So if you leave it there for them, they're not only going to stag, they're going to stag and use TX Extra at the same time. And TX Extra uh, will make it easier. If you were like fully dedicated to making the yeah. most highest resolution NFTs that you could on Monero, yeah, you would definitely incorporate stag into that as well. Um, but as far as like the extensibility for, for example, um, someone like Kaya that's building on ThorChain, um, if we give him transaction extra, he's just not going to use He's not going to use stack, right? He won't have any need for it. And I tend to think that's like the 99% use case. You're, you're alleviating 99% of the problem with stag. But, you know, then again, going to full membership proofs just like makes that argument totally moot because um, the, the main, pro the, my only real problem with not providing an output for arbitrary or a facilitating ability to use some small amount of arbitrary data is that it can poison the output set, uh, which is the weakest part of Monero's privacy. So as ring members it's go up in the output set. Sorry, say again. TX Extra itself poisons the output set. If I have decoys in my in my ring members that have that have weird strings of TX Extra, those are obviously not my transaction. Is that so? It's an extra bit of information. Like, okay, let's suppose hypothetically it's encrypted, right? Um, TX Extra. We've managed to get ninety nine percent of people encrypting their TX Extra. It's an extra bit of information that a transaction had outputs which came from a TX Extra. Um, but is it necessarily like, does that necessarily mean that the next transaction there came from that TX extra, you know, it, it does because most of the people that are using TX extra like Sarai or NFTs have this stuff posted publicly. So it's easy to, you see, you can run a scanner on, on the NFT websites to gather all the transactions that are, that can be excluded and exclude them from it's, 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 it's not a. It's it's an easy. You don't even need to run a blockchain to do it. You can just use a. You can go to a block explorer. Man, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of that. Um, that just TX extra itself poisons the output set. I wouldn't necessarily say it's like certainly one to one, but you know, you make a good case that there's, you know, you're. It's all statistical, of course, but you probably really are poisoning the output set to some degree. And if you if you think about like. Monero is small right now, so there's a lot of big attackers that don't pay any attention to Monero. If they did pay attention to Monero, as far as poisoning, they could, you know, like an exchange, we've already seen exchanges that, that use pre-selected decoys that, you know, that's like, that's, that's a problem on itself that Rucknium is working on to, you know what I mean? Like we have a whole bunch of different problems and, and adding the whole TX extra one on top of it is like, we've been trying to solve the one problem for two years. And we have five other problems on top of it that we need to get to. So we got to, you know, that's where I'm saying like, like the number one thing we should be doing is limiting it immediately because that doesn't take a hard fork with the relay rules and everything. And, and same thing, like with the mining templates, we can contact the top mining pools and whatever. Hopefully they don't mind these transactions. And then they won't be stored on the blockchain 
And then at the next hard fork, we can fix a bunch of other problems, get rid of TX. Well, I want to get rid of TX extra. And that should push towards innovation, towards Seraphis, full membership proofs and everything else that every, because if you, if, if you want to run a million dollar industry on NFTs, well then come help with Seraphis. You know what I mean? Like, or you can pay a lot of money to, to store it in efficiently. But bro, my extensibility. Local Monero and Havano and everybody else don't need it. Thorchain needs it for, for weird reasons and Sarai needs it and Sarai posts view keys. So I don't see the extensibility thing there. I see a damaging to privacy. Is like if you're posting view keys, then I, I can't support that. So whether whether or not you're using TX Extra, if you're posting view keys, then but I don't think he has to do the view keys thing if he's if he's if we got Seraphis. Because Seraphis has all the different view key levels. I'm not 100% on that, though. I think you still need to post them to show that everything in the Sarai walls is like properly backed. There's no paper Monero on Sarai. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, how Sarai works, but I've never been a Thor chain supporter. I like Sarai. I like Kai, but I don't like the way that... that Sarai is planning on like like Kaya had tweeted like you know he did a lot of work to try to make it to try to make it the best he could. He could have released it months ago. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? He could have taken it like it's Kaya's not stupid. He 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 could have he could you know he could do all the stuff that we're talking about, which is not doing it. Right? Like he's looking for real solutions, right? So hopefully like I'm saying, hopefully we can find a, a good one. Like I'm saying, Tevador has already been looking into full membership proofs and, and and all that other stuff. But we're we're, you know, we're not talking to outside people to find out what we can do. We're kind of just dragging our feet here. So Yeah, I'm kind of just joking with the uh my extensibility uh point. It's it's like this kind of like open like, yeah, we, we maybe we could do this and that, right? And but there's really not many people that <clears throat> that actually hardcore need to use transaction extra except for uh, mining pools. So it's more just like a part of me that's like hopes, you know, something could get built later on. But I mean, it's that's not really a good argument either. So does P2 pool use TX extra? Only for Coinbase. So like, and that was one of the things. When, if with removing it, we wouldn't be removing it from Coinbase transactions. But another thing we would be doing, hopefully, would be segregating Coinbase transactions from rings so that Coinbase transactions stop poisoning rings. Because Coinbase transactions are already public anyway. So that hurts privacy, having them in rings.